keep telling you that growth for the moment has gone out of style in the Wall Street fashion show, no matter how good it is, especially the highest flying growth names like the cloud stocks that we've liked so long here. These have been huge winners over the years, and they've been great during the pandemic. But as more people get vaccinated, somehow investors are gravitating only to the reopening place and leaving the rest behind. In many cases, I'm telling you they're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. But how do you tell which cloud stocks could be worth buying on the way down? Take Workday, which helps automate all sorts of back office jobs and finance and human resources. Last night, I reported a big earnings beat on roughly inline revenue. Management's four-year guidance was on the conservative side because they're conservative, for heaven's sake. In response, the stock got slammed down 2.4%. Not unlike what happened with Salesforce, work, Workday has now fallen close to 40 bucks from its peak earlier this month. So I have to ask, is, is this the buying opportunity we need, or do you have to actually get more cautious, as some would say? Let's check in with Anil Bushri. He's the co-founder and co-CEO of Workday. Get a better read on the quarter and where his company's headed. Mr. Bushri, welcome back to Mad Money. Great to be with you, Jim, as always. Okay, I, and you know, I'm attacking this head on, attacking this decline in the stock head on, because your co CEO, Mr. Fernandez, says, I am pleased to say that trends continue and meaningfully accelerated in Q4 with record pipeline generation across all three regions. In other words, this is the quarter that if you're looking to see how you're going to get huge numbers in 2021, it's now. The stock is not telling you that. The stock is looking at the 10 year treasury. Wasn't this the quarter where things accelerated? Uh, in Q4, it did. Um, you know, I just say taking a step back, the first three quarters during the pandemic were, were challenging. Right. And, uh, you know, the, the vagaries of subscription and counting models are such that that's a lag indicator. Uh, but we accelerate, uh, we expect uh, new bookings growth to accelerate this year. And that is our primary indicator in the way we run the business. So, uh, you know, very excited about where we're headed. And that acceleration. Will probably take at least a year to show up in subscription accounting numbers just because of the way the model works. But I also look at the logos, and I think that probably I would say one of the top five companies in the world is Nike. Why? Because they're the most they're most direct to consumer in Asia, in Europe, and United States. They're the market leader by far. There isn't really even a number two. And you won Nike. How do you get Nike in a pandemic? You know, what's been interesting about the pandemic is that uh, for companies that were in the cloud, they figured out how to how to thrive and adjust to the new world. For companies that weren't in the cloud, they realized that they needed the flexibility, agility, uh, you know, the, the ability to plan instantaneously. They needed those capabilities. And in many ways, for, for companies like Nike that are just such great market leading companies, by the way, that's run by one of my very close friends and mentors, John Donahoe, they recognize that they, they needed to move move this capability to the cloud. And so um, I think actually digital transformation will come out uh, as a faster trend out of, out of the pandemic. There's a company that I happen to like very much. I was initially critical of them because I thought they were part of the bottleneck uh, with COVID, but they weren't. It's a laboratory corporation of America. Now, this is a company that is working 24-7 to solve the pandemic. How did you find time and how, get their time and be able to be in front of them to win them over during a quarter where they are uh, swamped every second. Well, again, you know, it comes back to the, the flexibility and agility that, that cloud solutions like Workday provide. We've been very fortunate. Uh, we are so happy to have uh, Laboratory Corporation of America become a customer. j and J is a customer. Pfizer is a customer. AstraZeneca is a customer. Um, I just feel honored to be able to support these companies who are doing the best they can to you know, save our lives and, and uh, are just doing amazing work with the vaccines and testing. So uh, we've, we've always had a, 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 a strength in the pharmaceuticals and uh, uh, diagnostics role. And so, it, you know, it's continued. And so couldn't be happier. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure that they're successful because they're, they're taking care of all of us. They sure are. They're a remarkable company. And we use that. You know, it is. It is a great product. You just mail it in. You get the results instantly. Now, there's a company that we happen to be quite fond of that hits the 52-week high list pretty much every week. And I think it's because of internally they've become so good at what they do, which is Caterpillar, which I've always felt was not up to the times and now seems to be at the forefront. What are you doing for Cat? You know, we're, we're doing that same uh, transformation around human capital management and employee engagement. Uh, you know, in, in the pandemic, people people were having a harder time. CEOs and CHROs were having a harder time keeping in touch with their employees. They were not in the office. We're, we're 
for such a large part now uh, remote uh, remote working and uh, and so they felt the need to embrace Workday. They were a, a very loyal PeopleSoft customer when a co-founder Dave and I were at PeopleSoft, and so we're just thrilled to have them join join uh, the Workday family. An amazing company, an amazing company that uh, you know continues to just uh, do amazing things over so many years. It's it's it's. It's hard for companies to be that great for that long, and they're one of those really, truly great companies. Well, they're fantastic. Now, i got to give you the last minute of this. Uh, uh, Pecon, you got to tell us what that means, because I know we're going to hear a lot about it all year. So coming back to uh, you know what we learned during the pandemic, employee engagement just rose to the top of every CEO's list, uh, every head of HR's list. And in a, in a, in a remote uh, you know, work orientation, it was harder to really understand how do employees think about the company they work at, their engagement level, their comfort with their manager? Um, are they feeling fulfilled at work? And we were already down the path uh, at Workday with something called Pulse Surveys, but we recognized that this emerging trend was going to be critical going forward. And so said, hey, we got to get in this market now. The market's happening now. And Pecan is the, you know, is the well-known leader in this category, a UK space, a UK-based company an amazing management team. And, uh, you know, we kind of fell in love with the product and the management team and we made them part of Workday. Uh, they're one of the new generation of companies that's machine learning first, where they, they really use machine learning in the right way to guide uh, guide decisions and, and really give you insight into how are employees thinking about the company that they're working at and, and how engaged are they at. And that is a super critical uh, set of information that, that's going to drive companies going forward. Well, that's the future, certainly not just to be able to say, hey, how's everybody doing? That's the old way. That, this is the new way. And Neil, uh, I hope you're enjoying your, your co-CEO role. You look well. It's great to have you back on the show. Uh, I, I will just say Chano's a rock star. Yeah, well, he's he led the call. He had all the good stuff at the beginning. He took it from you. He's okay, that's Neil Bush. He's co-founder and co-CEO of Workday. And this was a great quarter, and it is going to be a strong year. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.